what did you think about that trip yesterday? Generally, I thought, holy crap, there's work to be done before we go back in there very much. It looks pretty spooky back in there. Oh, that's heavy ground when you see a treated tie like that, just crack like that. Doubled up. And if it came down at once, you're dead. But if we rehab number three, and we can have a back door up to number five and get back to where Ole found that vein. Finding Ole's gold vein is a dream the Dale family has chased for three generations. Over 90 years ago, a miner named Ole Fosness claimed he found a rich gold vein in this mountain. He hid it from his partner so he could take it for himself, but died before he got the chance. Ole told the Dale's grandfather that the gold vein was hidden behind a timber set 60 feet inside the Pete and Joe number no. five. Their father, Dick Dale, tried to buy the claim so he could get Ole's gold but was cheated out of his chance. Now, 50 years later, his sons finally own the mine, and they're gambling everything to prove the legend is true and collect a payout worth millions. But six days ago, disaster struck. Let me go rev it up, and I'll just crowd this down here tight. Oh, holy Whole damn bank came in. Man. The number five's entrance collapsed, and the slope above is primed to slide if they dig any further. Mama said there'd be days like this. But the number five isn't their only path to Oldie's gold. 70 feet below is the Pete and Joe number three, and according to the maps, 120 feet past the number three's entrance is a climbing tunnel called a raise that connects to the number five. If the raise is still intact, the brothers could use it as an inside track to Oldie's gold. But that's a big if. We don't even know if the raise is open. Well, 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 there's if to the fifth power, but it's a dream, and I think we ought to follow it. I'm saying, screw this. I'd rather double shift number five than monkey with three. Youngest brother Kit wants to keep their limited resources focused on the number five. They've hired contractor Marty Saluso to dig a new portal there. Through 50 feet of virgin soil, it's safer than braving the depths of the number three. But it will take at least five weeks to dig. And with winter around the corner, they may not have that kind of time. It's already October. Yeah, and one big storm and we won't be able to get to number five. We need to continue with number five. We know we got a good start there, and we know where we're going, and that's a fresh start. But we do, we need to do this work, too, if yeah. we're going to. But this work is for nothing if we don't know where we're going. But that's I mean, the thing. We and, don't know until we get there. But we I mean, can't we do all this work there. just to get there. I mean, that's. That's the nature of the beast, though. So we're going to go two directions, as hard as we can on five, and then we will we will do the work on three. As and much as we can. So we as got far as we can. two paths to all these gold, both going at the same time. We need timber first, timber and caps. And we're probably going to have to double timber all the way through, I think. All right. OK. That's what we'll do. To implement their two-pronged approach to all these gold, the Dales need timber and a lot of it. They figure it will burn too many days to harvest and mill themselves. So bookkeeper Tad gives the green light to dip into their limited budget and buy the wood they need. Hey, John. How you doing today? Good, how are you today? Great, hey, uh, we ran out of some timber sets and I need to come and place an order. Tad orders timber for 16 sets, spending $20,000 of their budget. It will take two days to mill the timber, five times faster than if they did it themselves. Oh, I love that. I'd stand here all day. With winter coming fast, Tad considers it money well spent. We're looking forward to a few more weeks of really nice um, fall weather 
but we never know because when that weather changes, we can get a heck of a dump of snow overnight. I mean, it's, it can change within hours. Heavy snowfall is more than just an inconvenience for the Dales. The Pete and Joe mines are 9,000 feet up on the steep slopes of Bear Gulch. And when the snow piles up here, avalanches become a constant threat. It's a danger the Dales are well aware of, thanks to another family legend about the famous Oli. Around right where we're working, they do call it historically Snowslide Canyon. And in 1920, that avalanche that, that Oli was involved in happened right there on that very dump. He and the crew were eating lunch at the portal of the number five. And Oli had an eye for snow. He tried to convince the crew to come sit in the portal just in case um, anything went amiss. Most of the crew disregarded the warning. But one younger guy went with Oli and they sat inside the portal and that snow slide broke. off the dump and down the hill. He and the, the kid tried to find anybody or do anything, but it was a fairly large snow slide. And they didn't have any luck. So Oli strapped on his skis and made what is considered a record run to town. Got a crew, they came back and got everybody dug out, but they were, they were all dead. Four men died. So uh, the weather can really change quickly and we're hoping that, you know, the weather's been nice, but we don't want to get, we don't want to have conditions like that again. While they're in Twin Bridges, Kit and Tad stop by the Historical Society. Tad got a tip from a friend that they have a newspaper article on the avalanche that only survived 100 years ago. And any information they can learn about Oli could help them find his gold. Have you been in here before? No, I sad to say I haven't. I've been meaning to get in here and haven't because Dennis told me that there was an article and it mentioned this avalanche that we've been trying to track down. I wrote a book report on it when I was in high school and I can't find it. Hi, Sheila. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hey, good to see you. Yeah, you too. We're going to be interested in 1920 um, newspaper articles if we have we have the Twin Bridges into 10 in 1920. Well, maybe we'll go dig through this. We'll see what we can find here. Fatal accident in Bear Gulch. Four killed and one injured as a result of a Snow slide at the Pete and Joe mine in Bear Gulch at 12.30 o'clock Saturday afternoon. A hundred years ago, I mean, we were just on that dump this week. Yeah. The dead, all of whom made their homes in Twin Bridges, are Orrin Stone, Edward Glass, Oscar Berger, and Mark Miller. Johnny Pritchett, who was the sixth occupant of the sorting shed, escaped by jumping into an ore tunnel where the accident was sent to Twin Bridges and a rescue party headed by Bert Page and Dr. LeClaire set out at once. The slide came like a lightning flash and none of the men had a chance for their lives. So nothing about Oli? Not a word about Oli. 
Isn't that strange? That's not the story that our parents passed down to us. Well, that is a conundrum and a correction. Yeah. I was waiting for his name to pop up when you're reading that article and it didn't come. He's still a mystery to us. Makes you stop and think.